Welcome to this video. This is part three of a series of developing some example JSL code. So let's look at the code as it's unfolded over the first two uh, sessions. This is the code that we have. It prompts me to select a predictor variable. And when I select it, it gives me a graph of my response versus that predictor variable and gives me an option to view histograms. In today's session, what I'm going to do is extend the code to give me an option to fit a regression line to these data. So the first thing that I want to do is to add a second button. So currently I have a button to view the histograms. It's called BTN. I'm going to have multiple buttons. So let me change that to be BTN1. And down here, I'm sending messages to BTN. So that also has to be BTN1. OK. Next, I'm going to put a second button. So BTN2 is a button box. And it's going to be fit uh, a regression line. So what I will need is to have some messages sent to that button but before i do that let's just address let's just make sure this displays correctly if you run this on its own and just choose a column then i'm getting an error too many arguments in the h center box so the h center box can only center one thing i've now got two things so i can organize those two things vertically in a v list box And now those are centered. Um, now let's get that message in. So if I copy these, this is button two. So I'm now making underline star. So it won't be a big fat button. It will just be a hyperlink. And button two also has to do something when I click on it. And I'll say it's going to be my my regression which is yet to be defined but let's just make sure the visual appearance is okay like so so that's good let's define my regression now so i've got a section here for the user defined functions i've got my graph my histogram and now we're going to have my regression that's the standard pattern of code for a user defined function it's going to take a y column and an x column as an input and jump is going to give me the code for this if i come to fit y by x oxy versus runtime fit a line. I want the summary of fit. I don't want to see the analysis of variance and I just like to make this a bit smaller. And I'm going to add a confidence interval. I can copy this now. I can save the script to the clipboard or if you don't have the option to save to the script board, you can save to the script window and then just copy that. OK, so that is going to get pasted into the definition of the my regression function. Select it all in tab to show it's contained inside. And then when we've got oxy, we want to use, we want to evaluate y col. And when we see runtime, we want to evaluate x col. OK. So let's make sure this works. There you go. So that's good. So that is the uh, functionality extended and we could add additional buttons, whatever functionality we want. But there's one problem with this, which is that if I were to choose a nominal X variable, then I can't do regression on this. 
So I'm going to get an error. Uh, what I would like to do is do a one-way analysis of variance. So what I'm going to do is check the modeling type of the X variable and then either fit a regression line if it's continuous or if it's not continuous, I'm going to perform a one-way analysis of variance. So when I come to this second button, whether I fit a regression line or perform one-way analysis of variance is going to depend on the modeling type of my X variable. So um, in here, I can say, well, let's, let me show you how we get the modeling type first of all. I have X call name. So this is uh, the something like runtime. You see it's the value is, is sex in this case. And notice it's a string. It's in double quotes. And so I want to convert this thing to be a column. So I can say column uh, DT. There. That's a column reference uh, for a column with that name with as a text string and that data table reference. And I can send a message to it, get modeling type. And let me call it X type. And let me just show you what that looks like when we run this, so show X type. And I'll turn on the log at the bottom so we can get the answer to that down here. So if I run, then X type is continuous. So if X type is equal to continuous, then what we're going to do is what we currently do. Else, we're going to do something else. And it's going to be similar. It's going to be that. But it's going to be a different script assignment. So my one way. So basically, if I've got continuous X, we're going to do a regression. Otherwise, we'll do a one way analysis of variance. And I still have to define this function. But also notice that this text has got to change. So I don't really want to uh, this this label for the button I want to define down here. If it's continuous, then button two sets button name. Pretty sure that's I always get the name. I always forget the message here. So how do you check messages? I can come to the script and index and display boxes. I can come to a button box and if I look here it is set button name. So set button name, fit regression line, and terminate that with a semicolon. And if it's not continuous, we're going to do something different. We're going to uh, perform one way and over. Just to emphasize the fact that this is where I'm setting the button name, I'm going to not have anything here. It's just a reminder for me really that it's been done down here rather than up here. We still need to find my one way. So come to, this is my regression under here, my one way. It's going to take arguments y col and x col again. And as always, we get jump to give us the code. So fit y by x with a nominal x. I can now do analysis of variance. I don't want to see a summary of fit. I don't really want to see the t-test analysis of variance. And that's fine. Let's just make the graph a little bit smaller and I can save to the clipboard the script and then paste the script into here. And then as usual, we want to evaluate y col, evaluate x col. And let's see if this works. If we choose sex, then the 
button says perform one way ANOVA, click on there, gives me one way analysis of variance. If I were to choose runtime, it tells me fit regression line, click on there like so. So that's looking very good. I'm just going to make one very, very final, final uh, change, which is just if you look at this now, uh, this title is a lot longer. I'm not quite getting, this is really uh, just a personal preference. I would like this to be really centered. And although it's centered in the middle of the window, these are not centered relative to each other. And they're organized in a vertical uh, list box, a V list box. I can say that within there, a line center, and that should just fix the problem just to keep me happy. And there you go. So that's nicely center aligned. There is, however, one problem with this script. By allowing us to include the analysis of categorical data, I have inadvertently broken the script. And let me show you what happens if I click on the view histograms. So the message says the column must be numeric. What should happen is when we view histograms, it should show a histogram of both the Y variable, oxy, and also the X variable. Now in this instance, let me just close this, um, our X variable is categorical, but if we come back to the code for histograms, then what we have is that we are asking for a distribution of continuous data, and we don't have continuous modeling type for the X variable. So this is failing. So I'm going to fix this problem in the next video. So we're going to leave it like this for now, but uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll fix the problem. Let's just do one thing. This uh, script should be saved with a new name. So let's save this as lesson three. Then tomorrow we'll be looking at fixing this and look and see if there's any other sort of latent error conditions that we might want to take account of. Hope you found this video useful. If so, please give it a like. And if you have any questions as you're working through, please put them in the comments below. All the best and bye for now.